John puts the dance first, which for a choreographer is huge. The dance has to be created using actors to tell stories, and Chris really understands that. I've been working with John for about 12 years, and we've really never stopped working since. When we were younger, I was just about dance, and then he educated me on what looks good through the lens. When your director is your mentor, it becomes an easy process. I'll create something, and then I'll film it, and I'll send it to him. But I know at the end of the day, John's gonna find his perspective on it. John had the storyboard set to the music so that we could see beforehand what the numbers were gonna look like. The dance in this film is definitely linked together. A lot of the salsa we're doing is more the street style salsa of New York. Then you have the street dance element, and the light feet, the flexing, the popping, the breaking. Doing a film that is about representation, I also felt it very important to represent certain dance styles. And street dance is one of those styles that gets misrepresented a lot. We think of Latin, we think of salsa, but then we also have to remember like, Breakdancing started with not only African Americans, but also the Puerto Ricans and the Dominicans that were there that were also oppressed. The styles come from people that had to dance. There are people living in the Heights who are now introducing the new style called Light Feet into their culture. It's very important to bring something that's a new culture that's never been on a film that's being also brought from in the Heights. Are you guys getting all of this? Yes. yes. Great. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Assembling this team of choreographers is one of my proudest moments on this film. Finding somebody like Eddie Torres Jr., whose knowledge is insane about the Latin dance culture, not just the movement, but where it comes from. And then you have Emilio, who's this sponge that can do every style. And you have Ebony, this woman is from the concert dance world. And then you have Dana, who's this incredibly detailed human being. Some of our numbers, 100 people, you have to divide and conquer. It was super important for us to make all of the dance scenes as authentic as possible. You need people that know where everything comes from. Otherwise, someone's gonna feel misrepresented. We have an amazing, amazing cast of talented dancers of all different genres, styles. I went to the dance auditions, and to be in the presence of that much Latino excellence, I was like, this is what I live for. This is such an honor. We get to have the top salsa dancers in the world come represent New York style salsa on two. Salsa on two is a New York style of salsa that my father helped structure back in the 50s and 60s. Our ancestors weren't born here. They came from all different parts of the Caribbean. It's our job to literally represent and go hard. In Carnaval, we had the Dominicans and they had their folkloric dance the Mexicans, which had their dance, the Colombians, which they're known for the Caleño style. So Carnaval was that one piece that we had to really represent each culture. When the Spanish conquistadors went to Africa, they took all these slaves and they allowed them to keep their music. And out of there came a list of rhythms such as cha-cha-cha, mambo, song. We fuse everything. So like even the salsa, this is song. Yeah. So we mix salsa with song, with limba, with cubing. In order for us to teach them, we had to show them the timing. There's on one, there's on two. Salsa on two lives in the rhythm that the conga plays. So this slap, it dictates where to break forward and back. This is probably one of the most technically difficult movies I've ever worked on. This thing we started with, it was like 15 numbers at one point. The thing that connects them all, it's the heart of it, the necessity to dance. All the choreography was conceived first in a room before even we had our 10 weeks of prep. Me and John sat down and we talked through everything. And then we went to a dance studio, we had 10 weeks of working stuff out. It's research and development, every project needs it. We had the first two weeks to come up with the choreography. The rest of the time, we just had to feed it to the cast and to all of the dancers. That's always the hardest thing. And you take what you create from a dance studio and you have to put it on the street. I respect dancers so much because they live in pain. I need a new body. Yeah. Yeah. I need a new body. I worry about you. <laughs> I want you to take care of yourselves. Eat well and rest and, and do your, you know, your stuff. With all the performance training that I've done throughout the years, I had never been through such an intense boot camp. We're sweating on each other. We're feeling frustrated. 
I mean, they were really hard numbers. A lot of days we had to count on each other to be like, nah, you could do this. For me, it was just like, Melissa, you're going to ruin this number. It was intimidating, but it was beautiful that I got to live with them for like 10 weeks that we were rehearsing and have them like cheer me on and tell me that I was doing all right. A few moments where I saw that you wanted to breathe and didn't. Yeah. And just, it's okay. I know the music is low, but like literally out loud. And it might manifest as ha. Five, six, seven, my Our whole mentality through this movie was don't treat the actors like actors that are gonna have to dance. Just kind of treat them like dancers. Our choreography team had us do things that none of us thought that we could do at the beginning. They were a little afraid of how much movement was involved, but once they got it, they got it. Chris was like, you had to dance in this movie. And I'm like, oh, well, I don't think it was Navi kind of dances. He's like, this was Navi dances. I'm very proud of them because they all came in and they're like, I'm not a dancer, I'm not a dancer. And then we'd be like, here's choreography. We'll change it if you can't get it. And I think that sparked them to go, no, I'm gonna get it. When the sun goes down it is one of the most technically challenging numbers because of a huge moving element. Sean and the choreo team went through their own process just to see if this could be even possible. That was the hardest thing, trying to wrap our minds around what would look like an illusion. Because, you know, we're just in a studio laying flat on our backs, pretending this is a fire escape, standing on tables. These are fake fire escapes. Okay. Our actors are seeing it live on, you know, a tilting building. That is just such a unique thing to have making movies. Oh, so try to pull yourself up. Yeah? And then I give you... We had rehearsed one day, and then we had left it for the eight weeks of shooting that we had, and then came back to it and had, like, five days of rehearsals. We two of the clumsiest people <laughs> ever, and they want us on this thing. No harness. I genuinely hope that people can see the richness in our dance. This is an important movie, and everybody knows that. It's important to be authentic in this movie. I want to represent. This is the last thing I get to do, you know what? Peace. Good, you guys, thank you.